So welcome again to the webinar. My name is Joanne Legler, and I am the Senior Director of Learning Partnerships for Executive Education at Yale SOM. Really what that means is that I have the opportunity to be the frontline person for those who are interested in any of our upcoming programs, whether they be digital or perhaps in person and on campus, like our Women's Leadership Program. So I'm often the first person that folks will talk to when they're interested in programs and I'm thrilled to be so. So if you have questions about our program, any of them, don't hesitate to reach out to us and I'd be happy to hop on a call, answer your questions via email, and then hopefully see you on campus at one of our programs or digitally at one of our um, online programs. So we're here today, as I mentioned, to talk about the Women's Leadership Program and the Women's Leadership Program, what you can expect to take away from it if you decide to attend. Women's Leadership Program, or WLP for short, is an on-campus, in-person executive program hosted at the School of Management in New Haven, Connecticut at Yale University. It's designed to develop leadership behaviors in women and those who support them. Behaviors like building high-performing teams, negotiation, managing crises, driving innovation, and creating an authentic leadership style. We have two fantastic past participants on the Zoom with us today. Jing Lang and Kel Bliss, who both attended WLP this past April. I'm going to go ahead and give you uh, more information about them, but I do want to get through some housekeeping items first. So if you've just joined us, do feel free to drop your location in the chat. Just really fun to see where everybody is. Also, we are recording this webinar. And the recording will be distributed afterwards to anybody who registered. So certainly we have folks who we know can't make it, but we're happy that they registered so they can watch the recording back at a later time. We do encourage chats and Q&A if you have questions about the program, about New Haven, about SOM, or have specific questions for either Jing or Cal, let us know and we'll do our best to get to your question before the end of our time together. One of our team members, my colleague Rachel Moledo, is on the back end making sure everything runs smoothly. Hello, Rachel. Nice to see your face. And Rachel will be helping out. So if you have a question that you think eh, doesn't need to necessarily be answered during the webinar, but you'd like to put in the Q&A, please feel free to go ahead and do that. Rachel will help out during the webinar, and then we'll be using the Q&A from the webinar to make sure that we can uh, answer your questions while we get toward the end of our time together. So don't be shy, chat us up or stick, uh, stick a question in the Q&A. And really on that note, this time is a discussion. You know, I'm going to be asking Jing and Kel a lot of questions about their experience, but at the same time, we would love for you to let us know what's on your mind as well. So don't be shy. Again, ask those questions and let us know what's on your mind. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce you to our two panelists. Um, and so please, if I've said anything incorrectly, let me know, Jing and Kel. Jing, I'll start with you. Jing Leng is an insurance executive with over 15 years of experience in the life and health insurance industry. She's currently vice president product and pricing at Insurance Supermarket International, Inc., or ISI, where she leads product development, pricing, and underwriting functions across the U.S., Canada, and EMEA. She holds a bachelor, sorry, an honors bachelor of science degree in statistics from Western University and is a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. As a fun fact, Jing just told me that she is a feline behaviorist, almost has her certification, or as she said, a cat shrink, and spends time uh, with the Humane Society. So thank you for that service, Jing. It's so great to hear that you are involved in your community. Okay, Cal, uh, Lieutenant Commander Cal Bliss is an active duty officer with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. I think that's how you'd say that, right? Great, commissioned officer corps, 13 years and counting. She's been part of the bridge team command for seven different research vessels across the US states and territorial waters and held land assignments across the world and the US from Antarctica, Alaska, Colorado, and Hawaii, all the way to headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. She's currently the Marine Operations Coordinator for the National Marine Sanctuaries and is stepping into a new position, congratulations, as the Executive Officer of NOAA's newest research vessel, NOAA Ship Oceanographer. The construction is now nearly complete. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Maine Maritime Academy in Marine Science. 
And her fun fact, I guess this comes as no surprise, maybe, as she races paddle boards. So if you are a paddle boarder, um, first of all, I'm impressed just with that, but then racing them is even more impressive. So without further ado, thank you both very much for your time. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you being for part of the women for being a part of the women's leadership program in the past. And I'd love to start off by asking you what I think is a pretty easy question. Obviously, you were seeking something when you were looking for an executive program, when you were considering your own professional development. And so I wonder if you would both tell us what where were you in your career? And obviously, it was just a couple months ago. So perhaps I've already mentioned that in your bio. But tell us what you were sort of thinking about when you thought about professional development. Perhaps you were thinking you needed a bigger community or you'd like to connect with more women professionally and, and build that network. So Jing, tell us a little bit about where you were at and then tell us what sort of prompted you to consider what might be next for you when you thought about your own professional development. And then, of course, I'll love to ask you more about the Yale piece of it, but let's start here first. Where were you? What were you thinking about? And what prompted you to say, hey, it's time for me to do something cool? Um, thank you for the lovely introduction, Joanne. Uh, where was I with my career? I spent, uh, as per Joanne's intro introduction, I trained as actuary as a profession. For the first 13 or so of my professional career, I was an individual contributor. Uh, in 2021, I stepped into a senior leadership role and since then I've been managing teams. So there are two reasons why I was seeking out uh, professional development. One is I'm looking to build my uh, community outside of the insurance ecosystem. I was the insurance baby. Essentially, my entire career has been in the insurance, reinsurance, insure tech industry to the point where my entire bubble are insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, and I recognize there must be world and industry outside of my immediate surroundings. So I made a point to seek out uh, additional exposures to things mm -hmm. that I made. I may be a big fish in my little pond, but I recognize there's a sea of ocean outside of my pond. So that's the way one. That you just said that. Thank you. <laughs> what else? Uh, the second reason was I was building a, a women leadership program for my uh, for my insure tech company. Uh, so we're a small company uh, when we started. Uh, it was about 50 to 60 people five, six years ago, and now we have over a thousand. And uh, we are recognizing that uh, we don't have any formal program to um, empower our women leaders or a minority in general. I wanted to start this program for the company. And where can I learn uh, how these programs are done uh, aside from looking at Yale? Um, so I, I was doing some research on the top ranked programs out there. I chose Yale. I'll go into why I chose Yale later. But that was another reason that I wanted to do some uh, research on uh, how to start the program at my own company. So those are the two reasons. That's great, Jing. I love how you're talking about not only um, two things that I think are important for all women to think about, but particularly those in industries where they can be either small or, or quite sort of narrow. And you're saying, I need to learn how people do this in other industries, or I need to just think about different ways of thinking and be challenged in my thinking. You didn't say that, but I'm guessing that was part of what's, what allowed you to seek out other people who were doing different things than you. Um, and then building a, a mini women's leadership program uh, for your own organization. You know, I think it's so important for us to think about how we can make a difference in our small space first, and then maybe, you know, allow that to branch out into larger your spaces. And I'm sure the women and other um, underrepresented groups in your company will be really grateful for what you bring back to them. And hopefully you'll inspire some of them to come and visit with us <laughs> for WLP or some of our other programs. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Cal, I would love to put the same question to you. Tell me a little bit about where things were for you and what sort of made you go, yeah, it's time for me to do something like a women's leadership program. Sure. Um, so I'm sort of at the point in my career where I'm moving away from being a junior officer into more senior leadership. And, okay. you know, there's sort of that, that natural step of like, okay, I'm comfortable here. How do I take that next step? And many of the, the folks that I had to look towards, like how they've done it, were males. Um, and, you know, there's slight we're all the same when it comes down to it, but there are slightly different styles sometimes. And uh, so I was sort of starting to look around for a program that I thought would give me some of the skill sets that I think I needed to move on to that next senior leadership uh, status level. 
um, knowing that down the pipeline, I have this new position coming along where I'm going to essentially be the executive officer of a ship, which means I'm going to be second in command only under the CO. Um, you know, so it, it's a big step. And it was one of those things like I need to make sure, first of all, that I'm on the right path. Um, and then sort of how to set up my own style, how to make sure that I'm moving correctly in the direction that uh, I want to go. Mm. And right about the same time, I was sort of kind of coming to these conclusions. Um, Noah put out a call for competitive training for leadership. There were a couple of different things, but one of them was women's leadership. And they were accepting two people, one officer and one civilian. And, you know, had us write an essay. I was like, yes, yes, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And so I wrote my essay and then, uh, you know, waited to hear whether I got selected or not and was sort of looking at other things just in case sure. uh, I didn't get selected. And lo and behold, I did. Um, but it was like three days after the the program was getting or starting for the last year. And I was like, darn. And they're like, no, 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 we saved it. You can go next year. And so myself and Meg, who is the other woman that went for Noah, were both like, yes, we get to do this after all. This is fantastic. It is right what we need. And so very excited to, to get to be able to uh, join in the program. And, um, you know, within taking on that new leadership role on the ship, like we're starting from scratch. We're building a whole new crew. So building culture in as we went was sort of something that I didn't know I needed, but now that I've sort of taken the program, like that's where we're going and this is great. Thank you, Cal. You you mentioned a couple of things that really resonated with me. Number one, you saw that there was a leadership path for you and that you were either lacking some skills or needing to strengthen some skills or maybe even just the confidence to know that not only was leadership ahead of you, but that you were ready for it and, and more than capable for it. Um, I also really like what you said about having a buddy in the program. Um, we do offer that opportunity for folks to come together as um, workmates. So if you are in an organization that would allow a couple of women or, or others to come and do the program, we do give a small discount uh, for, for smaller groups and teams. And the value in having three, four, five folks from the same organization is, is powerful. You know, we love to diversify, as Jing said, in terms of industry and work experience, but at the same time coming with a group uh, and then bringing all that momentum back, uh, whether it's two people or three or six people, um, you know, can be really powerful as well. Um, um, Kel, if you wouldn't mind answering this question first, just um, to keep on the path of, you know, choosing a program, you mentioned that there's a wonderful organ um, or opportunity within your organization to, um, to I'm guessing, sponsor opportunities for, for folks like yourself for more leadership training or more professional development, which is wonderful. And we love to see when companies can support their employees through that. Did you have a choice about programs or, or opportunities that were in this space, or was Yale sort of the only one on your radar? Um, and if so, what was it about the program that, that excited you either way? What was it that made you say, yeah, this program at Yale is really cool and I'd love to try it? So like I said, I was already kind of looking at other programs just to sort of do individually. And quite frankly, I was looking for things a little closer to Maryland, figuring if I was going to pay for it myself, it would be a little bit cheaper. Um, but then like as this was all happening, they came out with this competitive training and there were not just leadership classes, but there were probably 17 different training opportunities for people to, uh, to essentially apply for. And there were a couple uh, other leadership, one or two other leadership ones. This was the only one that was first of all, women specific. And second mm -hmm. of all, the description given on the website and everything, it was very much like, okay, so this is the kind of thing I need to go to the next level. It's not just sort of a broad overstroke of leadership in general. Like, you know, you can look that up online. This is actually like how to get from A to B. And this is sort of like building your own style and to, to get you to the next level, whether that level may be, but yeah, that was what I, I liked about that. it. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for coming up to, to visit us in New Haven. I don't know if you'd ever been to New Haven or to Yale before, but, um, you know, hopefully you had a, a good experience on campus with us. And Cal, I was uh, remiss in not thanking you for your service as well. So um, so proud of you and, and having you in the program. Jing, I'd love for you to answer the same question. You know, I, I'm curious to know if you did a lot of research into programs like ours and what made you choose Yale in the end. And again, thank you for coming as well. It's not exactly down the street for you either. So what was it about our program that attracted you? And Jing, you are on mute, just so you know.
Jing, if you need a sec, just let me know and I'll uh, move on. Great. So, um, Cal, it talk, sounds a little bit like you were um, eager and excited to start a new program. Um, and then, you know, you, you talked a little bit about that leadership path and knowing that you were going to be in a leadership position. What skills specifically were you hoping to develop? I really like that you talked about, oh, gosh, um, you know, I know that I have the, the capability to do this at the same time. I'm going to be starting a new culture. I am going to be finding my own leadership style. Were there other pieces uh, of where you were in your own leadership or professional journey that you felt like were missing um, that uh, you thought you might want to fill in this program and were also able to fill in and talk about the actual experience of doing that? Um, were your goals met? Yeah, um, I think one of the one of the big portions that I think a lot of us, especially as women tend to struggle with is the imposter syndrome. Um, and it was one of those, so first of all, even going into the program like, oh, you know, I've only got a bachelor's degree. There's all gonna be these amazing people with all these like external degrees. I'm gonna be like over here, you know, the like the uniformed person, you know, am I gonna fit in with this? And it was, it was really, really sort of diverse and wonderful. And so that was one good thing. It was like all the other folks were able to kind of like stomp on even the other cohort, not just instructors and everything. Like we're like, no, 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 you belong here. You deserve to be here. And like, we were all giving each other feedback and we were a very, very chatty bunch. Um, <laughs> everybody true. was like sharing, um, sharing their experiences. And, and it was just sort of wonderful. And that was one of those, mm. like, you know, being able to speak up and be really part of the group and like everybody was able to see things from different perspectives and sort of figuring out like where I'm sort of starting to go with my leadership journey was like, for me, that's the right path and I'm on the right path. And it was just sort of getting that support. I'm like that I'm on the right, I'm going in the right direction. You know, up to this point, any leadership has been kind of like accidental, if you will. Yeah. Um, like, okay, I think I see a need here. I'm gonna step in and, and make this happen but it's not been like officially like you have been dubbed as this person in power sort of thing. And so it was one of those like, okay, now that I know I'm stepping into this officially, is what I've been doing right? Can I develop those skills a little bit more? And just sort of learning about like how to build those teams since that's something I'm gonna be doing. Um, you know, in terms of building sort of a culture from scratch, that's sort of something I'm going to be doing you know, dealing with all these different personalities. These are these are all things that were very relevant and like knowing that this is what my next assignment is, I'm stepping in towards this. Like, these are things that I had in my head as I went through and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna put that in my back pocket for later. And like, oh, okay, so there's a, there a particular piece that we went through that was, you know, you can't have innovation and um, pro like progress process at the same time, they're like separate entities. And it's like, when you think about it, it makes sense, but you just sort of hear those together. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, wait a minute. Those are separate entities. I got to do these things not together, one thing and then step onto the next. And so it was like being able to break down that process a little bit more in my brain and sort of how I want to go about doing this. Um, that was sort of what I had in my head. I know you said you got a chatty bunch and I, I love that, but <laughs> nothing felt superfluous. Nothing felt chatty it felt like every time somebody spoke in your group it was meaningful it was powerful it was inspired by the person before them inspiring to the next person as well so yes it was an active group but I felt like everything anybody said they only said when they felt like they were going to contribute positively um, to the experience so um Jing, how about you when you were you know you mentioned kind of looking at a few different programs where did you land to say yeah Yale is the one for me and then your goals for the program would you say they were met were there things that hopefully exceeded your expectations and goals um tell me a little bit about your experience from choosing Yale through through the program and your goals uh, in, in starting it to begin with I will answer that question but I want to jump in on something that Kel mentioned earlier that really yes. resonated with me. Right. Uh, imposter syndrome. Oh my God. I totally still have that. And I don't think I'll ever not have it. I just learned to deal with it better. Mm. Um, I always wonder, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I capable enough? Am I you know, blank enough, skinny enough, right? It's, I don't know why that has anything to do with it, but apparently for, for women, that, that seems mm -hmm. to be something we care deeply about. 
um, good thing that I like when I feel really insecure about my capabilities, I can search back on my degrees, my designation to say, hey, you did this, like you can do this. You, you know, now you're leading 25 people across US, Canada, and Europe on these you know, important um, projects and driving results for, for, for the company. Um, so was, there are moments where I can remind myself that I, I got this. But I do say maybe because uh, I spend a lot of time in my head, um, there are a lot of times I still question mm -hmm. under the facade or perception of success. Yeah. I still have a little deep um, questions for myself, like, am I, am I good enough? And there's no way to conquer that except continued education. Um, for me, at least, that's what I find works. And uh, education don't stop just because you graduate from high school, university. Education stops when you say it stops. So I think coming to this program, learning from my peers and excellent group of professors and lecturers, uh, that was such a rewarding week. Um, and uh, back to the imposter syndrome. Again, I don't think I'll ever conquer it. But by surrounding myself with people that I feel so proud to be part of that yeah. helps yeah um why i chose yale um i read a lot of biographies a lot of people i read about graduate from yale so i figured if it's good for them it's good for me um another reason is it's close by well i'm sorry the obvious reason is ivy league that's the number one reason why i chose yale um second i was looking for a general um management leadership training like at first I wasn't looking for women only um, but I realized as my day-to-day -day, uh, world are working in business um, I find there are a lot of things that are only pertaining to women I find myself being interrupted in meetings when I don't see my male peer being interrupted right there are things that subtle observations that I do recognize after all these years decades of um, evolution <laughs> in culture evolution in terms of uh, how the workplace have changed there are still a lot of challenges faced by women minority women uh, but women in general um, that's why I decided to instead of looking for a general leadership program but a women leadership program um, yeah. and you know Yale um, Ivy School and the biography those are the other reasons that helped me decided on this particular program and it's really good i i really enjoy the time okay i'll have to follow up with you towards the end if we have time and ask for your favorite biographies and you can uh, maybe give us a summer reading list before we exit the the webinar um i'm seeing a couple questions in the chat so before we go on um i think it's important for you both to talk maybe a little bit about the actual experience of being at som at yale the travel the time off of work um, so I guess the questions that I'm seeing is, yeah, how did you manage the time um, to be away from the office? The program is essentially across three and a half days. For both of you, I'm guessing you came in on Sunday night, you checked into our lovely hotel, you made your way to campus first thing Monday morning, it's an early start, and you were with us for three straight days. Uh, two evenings, we had an opening dinner, we had a closing dinner, and then half a day on Thursday, and that's essentially a week out. Jing, tell me a little bit about how you managed to manage your time, uh, both before leaving to talk others into supporting you, and while you were on campus, how did you find the time to invest in yourself while you were with us? Uh, number one reason is setting boundaries. Um, this is something that took me a decade, over a decade, to be able to set. Uh, I used to prop myself on always being available. 24 seven, if you need something, call me. Doesn't matter if it's three o'clock in the morning or midday Sunday, I will be there. I used to prompt myself for doing that. And then I realized that it doesn't really help me as a person. Um, so I think, you know, we talk about work-life balance and now I hear work-life integration. At the end of the day, you are the only person that can comment how you use your time. So setting that boundary and sticking to it is how you can get that, make that happen. Um, secondly, I do always 
think about succession planning. Like it's literally the first thing I do when I get into a new role. I think about who can step into my shoes when I'm no longer there. Mm -hmm. So I have already um, started training my successor, someone with my team who is very good. I've oh I have had her to step into roles that I normally would. I would delegate responsibilities that would also increase her visibility in the company. And I was able to entrust her for some things and others for other things. So you know, I never succession planning just for one person. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I'm able to free myself. Yeah. My goal, it may sound contradictory, is if I ever leave a company, I hope the company do not feel the departure at all because the transition will be so smooth that people can step in and just get the work done. Mm -hmm. That is my top. <laughs> yeah. that, that will be a, that will be what I consider a success. When I leave an organization, people can just step in. Yeah, I can I can relate to so much of what you said, Jing. I'm sure Kel can too, because she's nodding along and Rachel, um, I'm sure can as well. Um, you know, I just left a, a position to move into the executive education team at LSOM. And I kept saying to everybody, call me if you need me, call me if you need me. And no one called me because no one needed me because the succession planning and the documentation I thought was clear enough that I'm still waiting for a phone call. And it turned out the place didn't burn down in my absence, right? And so setting those boundaries, setting those mental expectations for yourself um, is, is so powerful. And I really thank you for, for saying that because I think that's probably something not a lot of us do regardless of our gender, how we express our gender. Um, but it's it's a great reminder. And I'm really impressed that you were able to do that. And Cal, it sounds like the support for professional development was very much built into your organization. But regardless, you were still out for a week, you were away from home. Um, in your answer too, I'd love to hear about the community of the WLP program. So even though you were away from your built in community, sounds to me like you really crafted one here at SOM. So tell me a little bit about being able to get away. And also, I'd love to hear more about how, how both of you were able to find community here in the WLP program. Sure. Um, so I think to some extent, the community building is kind of built into, I'm going to answer that part first, by the way, sure, um, sure. is kind of built into how it's programmed. Like we started out with the tour of the campus. So we we're all kind of together and, you know, people were asking questions. So as they're asking questions during the campus tour, you're kind of getting to know the people in your cohort, yep. you know, kind of just chit chatting with folks. And, you know, you just tend to gravitate towards some people sometimes and, Kind of find your people and it seemed like we were all pretty well uh integrated like i said i i had a colleague come up and i didn't know her super well but we rode up the train together and so we were chit chatting the whole way up to yale from dc in the first place and um you know and then we sort of moved seats during every day so you're always chatting to a new neighbor and during breaks and everything and it just it got to be like you're all sort of shared experience which is going to create that kind of bond but also you know, you're sharing your life experiences, which is, it just, we, we meshed really well, which I think we got really lucky for that. I don't think that's always the case, but uh, this, this group meshed really, really well. Um, definitely. Yeah. Um, in terms of, and I already forgot, what was the other question? I was just curious about your ability to get away for a whole oh, week. Right. You know? I always find when we're on vacation and we're at conferences, uh, we're not working anymore, but everybody else around us is. And so even if you felt great coming back, hopefully we'll see from a vacation or a conference, uh, you know, whatever, whatever inch your shoulder went down, they go back up again as soon as you get home because you are now responsible for getting back to everybody who missed you while you were gone. But in any case, uh, yeah, what was that support like? What was right. the uh, the delegation like to make sure you could have that time because you know the advice I give to folks is don't do it if you can't come and be here and and not you know have your phone binging all day long and not have to have your laptop open not have to miss a session because you've got to hop on a call how was that process for you um you know back in, in your work life or even personally sure so the way our jobs work within NOAA core not so much the civilians but NOAA core we change jobs every three years. And so I'm sort of getting ready to leave my current job and about to step into this new one. So I'm sort of straddling things anyway. So I'm already sort of creating this extensive documentation of saying, okay, this is how to do my job for the next person that steps in because we're not gonna have any turnover. It's gonna be essentially empty for probably two months before the next person arrives. And so um, I was, I pre-did as much work as I could to make sure that there were no screaming fires while I was gone, essentially. Um, I 
knew a couple of things were coming down the pipeline, even though they hadn't been kind of dumped in my lap. I sort of mm -hmm. had basic templates ready to go to sort of get things moving. Um, met with some folks ahead of time to sort of, hey, I'm not going to be here. I'm expecting this, this, and this to show up. Um, this is where I think we want. So we sort of had that discussion um, about, you know, things that were coming up. And so everyone kind of was on the same page. Okay, we know we're going to run with this. You know, we were sort of ready to go. Um, I would check in the morning. So with the exception of the first morning, I took the bus, but you know, I don't sit still well, I move around a lot. And so I took the opportunity to walk from the hotel to the class every morning to stretch my legs. And I think it was about a mile. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember exactly. Good. But yeah. anyway, so it was, it was sort of nice to just sort of get a little bit of exercise in. Like I would go to the gym in the morning before I left the hotel, do my little walk. And I would get to class just early enough to check my email before class started. If there were any screaming fires, I would kind of deal with those or delegate them off to the people that could deal with them. Um, and I mean, knock on wood, I guess it's over now, so it doesn't matter, but nothing came up that was impossible to deal with. And so I was able to sort of fully focus, like I would get rid of that in the morning, um, you know, ignore most stuff, but if there was any like big, like big issues, I would deal with those. That way I was able to sort of fully be present for the actual classes. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, you, you've both said the same thing in different ways. Like I set my boundaries and I told people I wasn't going to be there. And, you know, somehow they figured it out <laughs> while I was gone. Um, and of course they did. And, you know, part of it is, I guess, trusting the people that we leave behind as well, which can be hard to do um, for those of us that feel like we've, we've always got to be there, like Jing said. And so um, I can totally, you know, relate to that and, and good for you both for, for spending as much sort of mental time with us as you possibly could. Um, what, if you can remember, it wasn't that long ago, in the middle of the program, and then I'd love to find out about how you're feeling about it sort of, you know, post exiting the program. Um, but what were some of the, the sessions that you found either most fun or most valuable? If you had to pick, I'll say two at a maximum, because I think we give about three to four a day for three and a half days. I mean, we're, we're well over, you know, a dozen or so individual sessions. Um, but, you know, if you can think about either a professor or a class, Jing, if you're ready, I, I'd love to hear what, what stuck out to you the most. Yeah, the most memorable class was a spaghetti building class. All right, don't uh, give out any secrets now. Oh, this is okay. That may come, All so right. you, you'll okay. have to talk about it in vague terms. <laughs> the main ingredient is a spaghetti, a few sticks. Uh, it was really interesting because we we're asked to build uh, as high of a structure as possible using as little, very limited, um, the same ingredients or inputs, mm -hmm. and uh, it was amazing in the sense that after it was done um so first of all half if i recall correctly um <clears throat> half the structure did not even stay so it was you know pretty bad but uh, overall it's uh, on par actually with um the particular uh mba demographic um a and after the professor so the, for the most successful structure it was uh, erected on the desk where I went to look at. And then the professor walked towards it, hold on to a structure and broke it in half. And everyone just like, no, like we're so, so traumatized by the breaking of a spaghetti structure that we only spent four, what, four or five minutes building. Um, what was really resonating for me is that how we hang up, hang on to the things we've done. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not successful, we, we can't let it go. We can't say, OK, this is yes, we have sunk a lot of time and energy onto this project, but it's not working out. We have to pull the plug yeah. um, in business, at least or in my uh, world. There are many projects that is now going well, and yet people are not willing to pull the plug because they mm -hmm. have spent six months, a year, two years of, you know, a lot of time and energy onto it. So it just becomes this cyberspace monster just keep on floating in the ecosystem but it's not really doing it it's not serving purpose anymore wow. so that exercise that breaking of the spaghetti structure remind me that there's some costs and yeah. when we recognize that things are not it's, it's done for 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 that particular um purpose then we have to let go and if we don't yeah. let go we will never be able to move on 
Wow. Um, then we can move on, make, make better mistakes. That's a powerful lesson to come away with something that seems so simple on the outset. So thank you for yeah. sharing that. How about you, Cal? What was what was fun for you? What is most memorable for you? Well, I mentioned a little bit the process versus innovation, which I think just stuck in my brain the longest. However, I think the one that was most impactful was the one where we we had to ask people to write little stories about us, um, you know, friends, family, colleagues, former people in our lives. Um, and it was sort of like a strength finder, which, yeah. you know, a lot of people have done kind of on their own. There's, you know, you can do it online, which, you know, that's very personal based. Like these are what I think my strengths are. It was really, really interesting to see that from other people's perspectives. And I think that's the one that was most insightful because you don't know how other people view you. Sure. And so having all of these people in my life um, sort of write these stories, it's like, oh, there's definitely some things that are sticking out that they're all seeing that are not things I would have considered. And so having that sort of perspective from other people to be like, you know, this is this is where we're seeing you shine. These are what what is meaningful to us was was really powerful to me. And it was one of those, like that was sort of one of those little check boxes, like, okay, I'm on the right path because this is what people are remembering. Like I'm doing the right things. Thank you, Cal. You know, it's, I forgot to mention, I'm a WLP alumna myself. I did the program back in 2018. I was fortunate enough to have a great cohort as well. Um, and one of my takeaways was, I'm not even about the, um, the sort of more formal program, all of that was great, but I had a really powerful connection with another person where uh, we talked about salary. And that's a thing we don't often talk about. And we had a really frank conversation um, about what it means to share this information, how we can empower each other, you know, to make sure that we're paid what we're worth, et cetera, et cetera. So it brings me to the point about, okay, you've, you've now been away from us for two months. And although it's only been two months, I'm curious about what you reflect back on and, you know, what you sort of put into practice since you left. Um, I also have a great question in the chat here, and this may uh, be similar or perhaps completely different, but after the completion of WLP, are there are opportunities? Have you had opportunities? Have you taken the opportunities we've offered to connect with your classmates? So tell me a little bit about, again, upon reflection, what you think you've put into practice since you've left and also since you've left, have you maintained the relationships that you started there? So Jing, how about you? Um, have you put anything into practice and how are you staying in touch with Cal and others from the program? I will answer the easy question first, easy for me at least. Uh, so we started a WhatsApp group when we were there. So even when we started uh, the campus tour the Sunday before, uh, we started collecting names and there's a WhatsApp group. It's very, very lively. Um, I always stop there. It's very lively. Um, <laughs> we also have a, a LinkedIn group uh, for people who, uh, well, nearly everyone have a LinkedIn profile. So we have a professional group there. But WhatsApp group is the one that uh, uh, we have a way to stay in touch. Uh, we're already talking right. about a reunion in 2025 in Hawaii. Yes. It's early days, we'll see. Um, there's also subgroups, I believe, uh, at least for me, well, we had a, 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 a coach group, uh, we'll call it a tribe. So there's six of us that we had uh, in-person coaching there. So we started a subgroup that we are also connecting and we talk about once a month, just whatever is going on with people's lives, hopes, dreams, disappointments. Um, so that has been extremely rewarding to uh, keep the relationship. What I learned uh, upon reflection, and I, I think I, I felt that seed planted when I was there at the program was um, alignment. Um, so I had... I will call myself a career person so far. Since I graduated, I was always in the corporate world. Um, I was always thriving for the next promotion, recognition, all the things, you know, status, paycheck, number of direct reports, the things that the society tells me that I should want. Mm -hmm. um, at the session, at the leader, Women Leadership Development Program, I felt maybe even it started before that, but I felt I started to feel a cleaning of misalignment of what is important to me as a person to what I'm spending a lot of my waking hours on, right? So for my day job, for my corporate work, um, my essential 
purpose is to make shareholders more money, essentially, make rich people richer, um, which is why, as I, you know, even before going to the program, I started evaluating uh, what are the things I spend my time on, and I realized it's not enough anymore. So I started to volunteer more at my local community, spending time with cats, right, humane society, being on cat shrink. Um, and then one thing solidified when I was at WLP program is if for me to really realize who I am as my full potential, I need to do things, I need to be fully aligned. Like I spend a lot of time at my work. And if I don't feel it's as purposeful as it used to be, then there's a change I have to make. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have a big reveal here at the webinar, but it just, a seed has been planted. And uh, I think I, I want to make choices in the future that are more aligned with me as a person on my overall values and not just driven by you know, status and promotions mm -hmm. and career, so-called career. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a pretty big reveal, actually. <laughs> and even if it's just a seed or a nugget, that's a powerful um, realization. It's a powerful commitment to, to you know, sort of living that authenticity that you you mentioned. Um, Kel, I'm guessing that if Jing is this connected with her classmates, you are too, in terms of WhatsApp groups and things like that. So if you have anything to add, please do. Otherwise, would love to hear about, if anything, what you've been able to sort of uh, take away from the program that you've either already put into action or at least planted the seed, uh, you know, for future action. Sure. Um... Yeah, I think Jing said it all with the, the WhatsApp and the LinkedIn group. They're fantastic and uh, makes my day when something new pops up or someone shares a picture and um, or someone just says, hey, I, I need a cheer up. Send me something great. And nice. there have been a few of those, which have been hilarious and wonderful. Um, in terms of seeds planted, I think, like I've mentioned a couple of times, like knowing that I am in on the right path, going in the right direction to be the leader that I want to be um, is sort of sort of the biggest one, like getting that confirmation. Like we all have different styles. Um, you know, I don't have to be exactly like the, you know, very rigid leadership that I've seen before. Um, what's working for me much better and sort of is helping build the culture that I want to be around is a much more like people focused you know, how are the people doing, you know, do they have what they need to, to move forward? And that's, that's sort of the, the leadership style that I'm cultivating. That's sort of the leadership style that I'm starting to build as we're sort of building out this new crew. Um, and to some extent, that's the leadership style I'm taking as I'm managing up with my, my new CEO. Um, you know, we have very different styles, but if I am setting out with this style that I've decided works best for me, and I'm you know, he's getting that style from me, like that, he knows what to expect. I am being consistent and sort of like, okay, I'm on the path that I want to be on. Everybody is aware of this at this point. And I got my crew, I got my, my ladies, like they're like, okay, they're giving me that backbone. Like I've, I'm on the right path. We're doing this right. This is, this is how we're moving forward. And I think that's sort of what I've gotten most. Those are those seeds that I've gotten. You got your own personal cheering section now. So. Yes. Um, we are at 45 minutes, which I don't know how we got here, but we did. And I want to make sure we uh, grab a couple of questions from the Q&A in the chat. So with the few minutes that we have left, I certainly have some follow-up questions for my panelists. But in the meantime, if you have a question for Jing or for Kel or um, both, uh, you know, definitely let us know, throw that in the chat or the Q&A. One question that caught my eye, if you were going to do this again, uh, and of course, you know, we, you want to do it again because it was so much fun, but, you know, uh, probably not likely. But if you were, what would you do differently? Or would you have asked different questions, perhaps of yourself or of others before you went or uh, in the program itself? So with the benefit of hindsight of two whole months, <laughs> it does feel like it went by quickly. Is there anything you would do differently? Questions you would ask that you didn't at the time? Either one of you want to take that one? Cal, you're, you're shaking your head, which means to me, like, no, 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 I I don't have a problem like stepping up and being like, okay, question. I think I was the first person in the class to drop the word bullshit. Um, I don't back down. I'm very blunt. Uh, and yeah, it was very much like if I have a question, I'm going to throw my hand up there and, and ask it um, or just get clarification. So I mm -hmm. would not change anything. I was mm -hmm. very authentic in my 
sort of uh, approach to being a part of the program. And yeah, it was just, it was wonderful. I wish yeah, there was it, a part two. I wish there was too. I know I'm kind of feeling a little bit similarly that I wish I could go back and do it again with the benefit of now five years of hindsight. You're a different manager, you're a different leader, you're a different person five years later. So I wonder if they'll let me do it again. Um, but one of the things you said, Cal, is I'm, you know, I'm not afraid to raise my hand. And maybe that's true in general, but I'm hoping that also just the community that you all, you know, formed immediately. And, and it's probably worth mentioning right now, there was an opportunity to um, connect even before the program began. We have an online learning platform. There's an opportunity to chat there if you want to come Sunday night and catch up with folks before the program begins. So yes, it's, you know, we want to raise our hands when we feel like we should, but in a community of trust that feels a lot less scary than maybe it would have otherwise. So um, how about you, Jing? Would you have done anything differently with the, the benefit of hindsight? Uh, I will have done nothing different since I arrived at the program. I would have started one of the pre-work sooner. Okay. Uh, the one that Kel mentioned that you reach out to friends and family and colleagues, ask yep. for stories of yourself. I, I procrastinated on that because I felt I wasn't sure for people I work with years and years ago, like how, where do I get the audacity to reach out to get their time mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. to write stories about me. Um, but I'm really glad I did. Um, reading about the stories I read, I, it, I was like my eyes welled up. Um, I would definitely, for, for, for those of you who are considering the program, definitely do that as soon as possible because that's also respectful <laughs> to other people's time, right? Yeah. I give everyone, I think, a two and a half week, um, like I asked them two and a half week ahead of time, but I could have given them more time had I started mm -hmm. sooner. So yeah. definitely start the exercise as soon as you register mm -hmm. um, because you, you don't know what you may hear to Cal's point, what you think you're good at and the, the image you have from yourself may be quite different from others have of you. Mm -hmm. I was seeking in particular things about, you know, what great insurance product I build or how good I am as an actuary, but none of that came up. It's all the soft things, the things that you mm -hmm. did for people yeah. um, that I don't remember until I read about it. I was like, oh yeah, we did do that. It's, um, yeah, so I would highly recommend start the exercise as soon as you register. Yeah, that pre-work, it's there's not a lot, but there's enough uh, to, to get you in the mode of, um, for those of us who haven't been in school in a long time, of kind of going back to school. Um, and again, it's a little bit for me about time management is finding the time to invest and not doing it, you know, on the bus on the way up to class that morning, um, but but really saying, okay, what can I put aside or what what do I have to put aside to, to invest in myself? A really interesting question here. I'm not sure if it'll resonate with you, but was there anything that you learned that, that worried or scared you? Any reveal? that came through the program that you said, oh, shoot, maybe this is a weakness of mine. This is something I really need to pay attention to. Um, I'm really worried about this, that, or the other thing. It's a really different way to frame emotions that might come out of this program. We've been very positive and your experience was so positive. But on the somewhat flip side of that, was there anything that made you go, wow, I really need to work on this. So this is really uh, an area that I can grow into, even if it doesn't necessarily scare you, but excites you. Did that come through for either of you? Yes, go. I got one. Um, I don't honestly remember what the full class was, but it was along the lines of the one where you were asking people for things. Mm -hmm. That one made me very uncomfortable. Interesting. Um, and so that was definitely like, oh, yeah, okay, that's something I should probably work on because I don't like asking things of people. Yeah. Um, and so that was sort of one of those like, yeah, that's going to be something I need to do. So that is something I need to work on. Uh, so I would say that that particular sort of exercise okay. was class. Yeah, it sounds to me like that might have been Zoe Chance's class. Uh, and she's got that wonderful book about influence as your superpower. So check yes. that out as a, a little endorsement for Zoe, one of our faculty. Um, I think I have two more questions. That's probably about what we have time for. Um, one is a really nice question, I think, uh, when we go back to asking for that time off, um, whether or not you were sponsored, how did you come back and say, here's what I learned, everybody. <laughs> were people curious about your experience with WLP, with professional development in general, or was it expected of you to come back and teach others what you learned in general and maybe not about your your own specific self but maybe that too did you have any deliverables uh back at work um or did you offer them up anyway even if they weren't expected uh did those conversations happen back at work 
So I had no formal deliverable since it's my secret master plan to learn how WLP works at Yale anyway to bring it up to my program. Um, but yeah, I did share that with us being the senior executive team. I'm working on getting two of my senior members sponsored for a future cohort, knock on wood. But yeah, that, that would be something uh, if, if we can get that through, then th that would be awesome for me. That is great. All right, guys, I have one more question, and um, I hope this will sort of put the, um, what the positive equivalent of the nail in the coffin is, but um, you have a group of, you know, 50 plus women who are here listening in today. What piece of advice, you know, you would you give them? And you've already talked a little bit about, you know, start the pre-work a little bit earlier, delegate, you know, make sure you set up succession planning, um, even just for this, as well as perhaps, uh, generally speaking, somebody really resonated with that in the chat. But for somebody who's on the fence, and by the way, let me just quickly take a, a side here and say, we would love to have all of you come. We are already sold out for September's session, and it is only middle of June. So this program does tend to sell out quickly. It tends to sell out every time. We run it uh, most of the time, three times a year. While we do have an online version of it, uh, we're here to talk about the in-person in, in uh, on-campus women's leadership program. So if you were in the shoes of anybody who's listening to you talk today and they're on the fence, they're not sure, they've got you know the next eight months or so to figure this out, what advice would you give to somebody who is where you were months ago thinking about doing a program? What's the best nugget you can give to somebody? Anyone can go first. Jing, what do you think? I was never on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was all in. Well, it sounds like your 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 advice is just do it. You know, maybe to borrow a phrase, um, in which I yes, love. The I love ending yes. Things, like go for it, it. Don't be afraid. There's so much value. Um, values I expected and I expected um, mm -hmm. coming out of the program. I just, I, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's yes. such a valuable investment of my time. And it's an amazing group of women and classmates, sorry, not just classmates, but also lecturers mm -hmm. um, that I otherwise would not have met. So it's, there's infinite ROI and I, I don't see any downside. So like, yeah, go mm -hmm. for it. All right. I love that. That's actionable. How about you, Kelly? You feel the same or do you have something else you tell somebody? Pretty much that's what I would go for. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. So I would say do it. Go in with an open mind and you might be surprised what you learn. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much. I do have a few housekeeping notes to end our session today. Um, obviously, first of all, thank you, Jing. Thank you, Kel, for being with us today, for being in the Women's Leadership Program, for speaking so positively about it, both to people here, as well as back in your home communities, and hopefully even throughout that. I've seen a lot of folks on LinkedIn talk about the program, share the class photo, um, and hopefully that's inspiring others. It must be, because like I said, we we have one coming up next week, and that one was sold out a while ago, the one coming up it's September just filled. So I know, sadly, some of you are, are excited on the call today to, to sign up. And we are putting a big red stop sign in front of your face right now, which I hate. But uh, we do hope to see you in April or June of 2024 and tentatively in September as well. Um, so if you're interested in joining, you know, obviously let us know. Um, I've seen a couple people say, hey, can we hop on a call? Absolutely happy to hop on a Zoom or a call with anybody who has questions um, kind of on the operational side of things or logistics side of things. That's literally what I do uh, in my job for executive education. So don't hesitate to reach out there um, or to reach out to uh, me uh, personally. Uh, and Rachel can also assist uh, by forwarding those emails on to me. Um, so understand uh, that you have choices. There are other programs that you might be considering, whatever you choose. And we do hope you will choose to continue to engage with us. Um, I do hope that this time together was helpful to you. Um, and if it doesn't work out to be in WLP, uh, other women's programs that we have, we have an online version of WLP. It's quite different. The curriculum is, is sort of similar. The experience, as you can imagine, especially after hearing from Cal and Jing, is going to be really different. Um, but we have a couple of versions of WLP online. 
We also have a lot of wonderful digital programs. I'm in the middle of a decision-making class right now, uh, which is an open enrollment program that's delivered online through some of our partners. Um, so just know we've got lots of great opportunities for you here at Yale SOM. Um, and we will be sending a follow-up email. We'll talk a little bit more about these opportunities that we have at SOM. Um, and then again, happy to chat with folks as well individually. Rachel, thank you so much. My colleague Rachel Maledo is on the back end uh, answering your questions furiously. And we're really th so grateful that she could be here today. The, I mean, I'm sure you can see it. The chat was furious. Um, and it was so exciting to see you all engaged and asking such great questions, um, both to get a sense of the program logistically as well as programmatically. So that is it for our time together today. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Rachel, Jing, Kel. Thank you for everybody who attended. We'll be following up soon with more information, and we look forward to seeing you at a future Women's Leadership Program. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.